Glad I have passed without trace for now. <laughs> oh yeah, I have disadvantage on stealth checks now because of scale mail. Oh well. Yeah. I got passed without trace. Team Sneaky Sneaks is at a disadvantage. Team Sneaky's dead. So, uh, you all are being transported via rock through the city. Uh, calling it a city is kind of incorrect. There aren't buildings. There are structures built onto the trees. Uh, everything here is so carefully managed. Everything seems to be made out of natural materials. There's almost no metal in sight. And there are a lot of nearly naked people baking in the sun in every direction. Very little work is getting done. You see a lot of people look messing around. Art, uh, swimming, uh, some sort of like gymnastic or maybe CrossFit routine is going down. Wow, I really like this place. Is the architecture, is it more like, like it's, like, let's say if somebody were to build, like, say, how, like, the tree's grown into that shape, or is it actually, like, look constructed? Some of them, the tree has grown into the shape, and others, they are clearly constructions. It is a combination of both. Cool. Uh, so, Runar yeah. silently floats beside all of you. Uh, seemingly keeping very good pace with the rock, whose movements, of course, force it to m shake and mm. move in every direction. Uh, so for the rest of you, it's kind of like you're being jerked around every second. Uh, it's nearly vomit-inducing, which is why I would like all of you to make a constitution saving throw real quick. Oh, boy. I know. It's so I good. I got that new booty. I can make this real. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, rather than talk about your booty, why don't you... No, I'm just... Just make your okay. roll. I know. Okay. You know, sometimes you go for it, you think it's going to be good, and then you get to the joke, and you're just like, no. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> next, next, next level, everyone's oh. going to get plus three on these saving throws, man. So it's my quick question good. is... I could, you know, I could use fucking spirit out. Who is sitting across from Agram? I don't know. That's a good question. I would be near the front because I'm enjoying myself. So I don't know when the last time I ate was. <laughs> Is it like we're fa like benches facing each other? Yes. Fuck. I'm I'm probably beside Kelly. <laughs> well, it's either Finley or Daka then I think. I'm throwing up because I haven't had anything to drink. Well, today. no, it can't be Finley because Finley has to be sitting next to. So it's either Kelly or Daka. Who wants to be the sheep and who wants to be the wolf in the well, wolf sheep? Well, we're still sheep. missing Finley. Yeah, no, Finley has to be poison. sitting next to Agrim in a two-by-two two coordination. If it's a two-two two facing each other. Yes, Finley has to be next to him. So it's either Kelly or Daka that gets... Uh, uh, what, is your, what is your con save, Finley? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, it might not matter. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, vomiting on each other. Uh, hold on. It is... 18. Okay. Daka, Kelly, who wants to be the one who gets... Uh... All right. I'm a one. Daka's a two. All right. Uh, Finley's a three. Not well, Finley's Finley. not going to... Finley can't get it. Okay, so one, two, then. Yep. I'm a one, you're a two. Okay. Don't underrate yourselves. I would say that you're both sevens at the very oh, least. Oh, man. Thank you. Well, with my new con score, I'm definitely a ten. Uh, so here's what happens, <laughs> Kelly. Yeah. Agram throws up, but you're in a dive, so the vomit goes up, and you're thinking you're all right. And then the thing, the bird levels out and suddenly jerks back up, and you get, it's like Nickelodeon slimed. It's not like you get hit in the face. Your whole body, whoosh, <laughs> is covered in it. It's mm. probably mostly bile, too. Yeah, it's been a long yeah, time it's really, I've really, eaten. really rank. Um... The rider turns back. He's like, oh, yeah, that happens. I haven't anything to drink today. It's probably... Big Get used to it after a while. I um, I take out a, a, a napkin or something. Yeah. Does anybody have precipitation? 
No, I don't have any. I don't have any cantrips for mending or anything like that. Mister um, Ruinar might. I like shout. Do you have prestidigitation? I do, but you're going to need to steal yourselves for the next part. It will be unpleasant. You should eat better. You should have a better diet, Agrim. You fed me fucking brock. <laughs> so Ruinar is just like. I would love like... so hard if this was in the time. The Brock Bra has probably already passed. It's been like <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no, I no, no. It's been a while since he, but it's just funny. It says uh, Kenley's like you need a better diet. It's probably like a better diet's probably allergic to dwarves. Like dwarves need like bratwurst and beer and like that's it. So Runar is just like, no, that's completely incorrect. Uh I insist that all adventuring parties have someone who makes sure you get a nutritionally balanced meal. It's part of our adventuring ethos. Are you dwarf? Very thoughtful of you. Are you dwarf? I have been aware of dwarves for longer than you have been alive. I've been that's, eating that's, that's, that's and taking care question. of dwarven orphans. But uh, have you, did, they, or did you live in dwarven society? I don't think so. Well, I did for almost uh, a half century. Are you a one-upper? That means that I've spent more time in dwarven society than you have, so don't chastise me about my dietary choices. I get plenty of greens. It's my understanding that you aren't actually a dwarf. You are aware of that, right? You've never been a dwarf. It's fine. Okay, I identify as a dwarf. It's like, what year, what it's year, what year is it? What year is it in the game? <laughs> what year is it in the game? Uh, assume his race. Two twenty one thirty six in the Elven calendar. There's twenty one thirty six. I you can't. Did you just assume my race? Wow, wow. Yeah, no, I went there. Uh, so the rider has turned back, and he's been trying to get a word in during this, and then at some point he just like shrugs. The rock folds its wings in and does a barrel roll while you're all strapped in and that's right, when you guys I... notice you're rapidly losing altitude you are directly over a dark hole in the ground this thing is like hundreds of feet wide there are trees that line it all around the edge and water from the caldera is pouring between its roots and falling in this majestic circular waterfall that leads down into some place that the sunlight doesn't touch the bottom, as far as you can tell. So and you are currently and you're currently down? upside down over it and falling into it. I'm definitely I'm definitely like the in between laughing and screaming. You know that yeah that that, that pitch yeah, been there been there definitely, almost every yeah. day of my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. I'm enjoying the hell out of this vomit comet. Regardless, vomit comet. This will probably hit Docket tomorrow after the high wears off. Uh, as you pass the, let's call it ground level, the rock spreads its wings suddenly and writes up. <laughs> you guys flip back over. Uh, you drop for what is almost certainly a few hundred more feet until finally you pass through the darkness at the bottom and it looks like it's some sort of shade bubble. Uh, like a like a permanent darkness spell. Who has uh, dark vision here? It's everybody Every, but Finley. Everybody right? but Finley. Finley, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, you've been, have, you're falling into the darkness, and all either. of a sudden, you're just like, "Oh fuck!" All right, Kelly, you're there too. Daka, Agram, you're like, "Oh, this is totally normal." Um, oh yeah, no, underground is. I mean, that's my jam. You see the where this rock is coming down at. It looks like there are a lot of other rocks here that are all saddled, not for. Uh, passengers but for transport and it looks almost like this is some sort of trading ground where they move goods above and below ground into the drought tunnels like a just a deep some sort of like depot or is it more of a military base kind um, of thing? Um, it's it's a mercantile depot there are people that you would assume are soldiers insofar yeah. as they have uh Maybe weapons it's not, more it's, not than like a a, it's not like a forward operating base or anything it's no i mean no one here is wearing armor the temperature is so hot uh i mean we're talking in excess of 110 degrees now that you are uh underground in the caldera i think daka super enjoys this because tiefling you know yeah you have resistance uh, to fire and cold that's true he has both uh yeah so just out of nowhere you see a piece of raw meat get flung in front of the bird and it goes <laughs> and scarfs it down. Uh, and Runar says, come down off of that thing. And, uh, oh, yes. And he 
he like produces his staff out of magic uh and waves and a light appears uh on agrim so agrim your uh beard is now imbued with a light spell so that finley and kelly can see yay well what the what the fuck i mean now how am i supposed to be sneaky with this fucking thing why not pick one of the, the other ones why are we sneaking around don't aren't we here to go it's not the point if we should need it i mean i can dispel it at any time don't worry about it yeah. you know you, what well, fine why'd you, why'd you he waves his staff though? and now <laughs> finley your gleemo coin is now a light beacon I mean, that's yeah. fine. I just, I didn't want bright shit. It's in my face and my eyes. It's, you can't, it's hard to see. It was very hard to see. It's my point. All of you should come over here. And he pulls a bowl out of his bag of colding. Nice. <laughs> Taps it and water. <laughs> we've been here. I was going to say, we've been here before. Water pours into it. And he's like, this is cool. Drink from it. You're going to require it. Don't we have a pitcher of water bullshit? A decanter of endless water? Yeah. We used to. We don't anymore. Oh, okay. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, you must drink. Even these few minutes already, your body should be sweating through your clothes and armor. I mean, I don't really sweat, but I am feeling the heat. Drink. It's cool and delicious. I'll drink it. Okay. Just be clear. This is like mm. a massive bowl. We're talking like yeah, this no, big. That's fine. <clears throat> am I drinking the whole thing? I mean, you can if you want to. We're talking. That's like two liters of water. Yeah, that would, it's a lot. I mean, he'll refill it anytime anybody else wants to take a drink. I mean, I'll I'll drink from it, but I would I would like to say that I'm not as. This is like my underground. Like this is my jam. That's what I did for so long. But this is way hotter than Dwarven Lands. No, I mean, I mean underground's still pretty fucking hot though. I mean, underground is fifty-four degrees Fahrenheit normally. This place is almost twice that on the Fahrenheit I mean, it scale. Depends, but yeah. I'll take a drink, but I don't think Doc is even breaking a sweat, which is weird because I don't know if I don't know if Doc has ever been in the situation before. Like he's a tiefling, but he was above ground, like in mountains for most of his life, or what he believes is his life. I mean, you don't. You are aware of the heat, but it doesn't affect you like it does everyone else. Yeah. You're just like, oh, cool, free water. I guess it's kind of cold. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I suppose we should walk around and talk to people, I suppose. Or do you happen to know where the crystal is? I am aware of the possible location of the dragon, but it is considered to be a great and sacred guardian of these lands. Well, we don't plan on killing it if we can avoid it. Well, I mean, they might not let us get near it. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I have done my best to make the Adventuring Guild uh, upstanding citizens but they do have a reputation of killing everything that they come across well, let me ask you this getting drunk um, constantly especially in the middle of the day in terms of dragon kin like myself is that would it be unusual for me to ask to visit this dragon? i don't know that anyone living has ever observed a dragonborn Congratulations, I guess. Flurry the Elder is almost 2,000-something. He was there when the Empire fell. And then perhaps that might be our best bet. Well, we're in the wrong location. If we wish to speak with Flurry, we'd have to go back up. No, to speak with the dragon. Oh, possibly. okay. Well, if you want to just walk around and say, Hey, I'm a dragon. I want to speak to another dragon. Go for it. If it's a if it's a sacred guarded location, then I'm assuming there's someone here that we someone higher up that we would need to talk to if we don't want to be their your typical adventuring type, correct? So while the the five of you are gathered around, uh, the rock has already taken off in search of more passengers. Two speared drow come over uh, and are approaching your. They're not making any attempt to hide that they are moving directly towards you. Um, they're not walking casually. They're walking like people who are trying to walk casually. Mm. Okay. 
I just, I, I do, I do the, um, you know, the quick up nod to the direction that they're coming from and, uh, turn to face them. Okay. Looks like we're gonna, this choice is gonna be made for us. So one of them turns to the other and up nods towards the rest of you. And then he ups his pace to be a whole stride ahead of his partner and says, you speak common. We do. Yes. Good. I come on behalf of the great worm. Them you know been what, sending me. What is it that you wish to tell us then? It requests of you that you live among us for seven days. And then it will meet with you. That sounds agreeable. Why yes. seven days? We do not ask of the great worm. All right. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that. Is there like um, uh, rituals or housing that we need to be aware of? Whatever you need here, we'll be provided. The worm has demanded. Is there anything we can do in these seven days? Is there? There's much to do here in the drought tunnels. Let us know, I guess. We got nothing else to do. How do you feel about wine? I I have been known to really enjoy wine. Well, now you're speaking my language. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a little bit of beverage would be pretty good, I guess. I'm not drinking any fucking Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what that is. <laughs> Wife runs a wine tasting tour. Take you three days. Take you through all the drow enclaves. You seem like folk that can handle the walk. Sounds good to me. Three days. How tall is the drows? Out of curiosity. Um, we're about safe. We were between what five, ten, six foot. Thereabouts. No, almost all the drow are at least six foot, and some are edging up on seven. Okay, so they're gonna um, have some tall holes. They're, yeah, they're tall and lankier generally. Okay, that's cool. I will uh, lead the way. Um, Kelly's gonna to... fuck the drow. That's what's gonna. <laughs> well, no, I was more worried about the tunnels being able to walk around in them. Oh, yeah, I mean, even but the yes, that too. even the dwarves make massive tunnels. So I mean, mm. so as you're following this person, uh, his partner catches up and says, "How you feel about?" Arts, history, museums, culture, dancing. I'd be interested I, yeah, in, dancing. I'd be interested Absolutely. in I mean, it depends how much wine you get in me with the dancing thing. I've danced like maybe twice in my entire life. It's glorious. I've seen it. You I've have only, not. <laughs> I've only danced when I died, apparently. Shocked by a dragon. I think I danced at a wedding once. That's about it. Oh, I thought you were talking about the succubus for a second. No, that I mean, was horror dance dancing, and it ended with me dying. <laughs> Seems like yeah. you all have a lot of stories. Oh, I, the stories I could tell. Perhaps you'd like to meet with one of our storytellers. Um, Arthur, is there like some sort of weird insight that I can make here, just to make sure that everything's on the on the on the kosher here? Sure. I mean, it's not a weird insight; it's just a regular insight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they were kind of 11. walking oddly. Yeah. I mean, nothing seems wrong here. Uh, these people are. I wouldn't say. And the, so friendly. this will be. So this will be entirely from a scholarly perspective. What I've read of the drow, and all that sort of stuff. Whether they've been welcoming in the past. I mean, the drow have a very sinister reputation from. Yeah, a human point of view, right? The Drow, when when the human kingdom and the Drow Empire or the Elven Empire went to war, the regular elves who could live on the surface and had a regular time clock would engage the armies, you know, during the day, and then at night, Drow raiders would come and show up and fuck the human shit up, and then the humans would never get mm -hmm. any sleep, and so the Drow have this incredibly sinister reputation. 
compared to the rest is you know like they can pop up from anywhere at any time they'll haunt your dreams they'll steal your children murder you in your sleep i you like s- them already yeah <laughs> they'll leave one slice of ham in the thing it's fucking terrible yeah so i mean their reputation is incredibly sinister from the Bastards. human kingdom's point of view but it's all like fairy tale and legends it's the drow never leave yeah. elven lands more well, or less. i mean from what Agram, his experiences have been. I don't know that you guys have either. met a drow so far. Uh, no, but I've fought him in the past, right? Well, I meant like in this campaign so far. Wait, no, not in the campaign, but I mean, just his personal experience. Yes. Uh, um, you mentioned so is this, is, would this be considered merrymaking, Arthur? I mean, if you want to spend a whole week merrymaking on the drow government's dime, yes then yes i will do that (laughs) you're like okay uh (laughs) you guys spend three days doing the wine equivalent of a pub crawl uh Mm -hmm. so the elven conclaves of the drow are kind of like small clusters you're not talking like one huge cavern like menzo baronzon from forgotten realms they're just you know like here's three families that live here and then they're connected to three other families and two families and one and you know here's a guy who makes wine in the middle of nowhere out of mushroom like one fungus of those, one of those ant tunnels where they pour the metal down yeah on earth it's like exactly the whole of drow society is like islands of ant tunnels uh mm. that exist not just horizontally but also vertically so you're constantly going up, down, left, right, around something, in something, circling and spiraling. Uh, you have no idea where you are by the end of it, and you're all trashed the whole time. Uh, yeah, because I would, honestly, I would really like Kelly to have a break from the, uh, the thirst? depressing anxiety of the thirst. Yes. Uh, yeah, 100%. So during, during the seven days, it is regular Kelly affair like trying to trying to literally hit on anything with uh the right bits Mm -hmm. and um and then i need to make a perception check okay i can do that can you be really say we'll see (laughs) yeah okay so here's what happens finley uh you somewhere around the fourth day once the once the wine crawl has ended and you guys are just like, let's keep getting drunk. And they're like, all right, now the brewery tour begins. Let's look at all of the root beers that we make. Um, you Falk has been offering people like a trade, like a, I'll drink some beer and like offer like <laughs> anything to people. You gotta be friendly. Pass by someone who bumps into you, and you are you manage to step out of it they try to lift your glimo coin they try to steal it right off your head it's a clean lift if you had not gotten a 15 or higher they would have got this thing from you but you jerk out of the way in the time this was great i mean this guy was the perfect height to his fingers were loose relaxed at waist level which for you is at head level he just accidentally ran into you he was right at the edge of being able to untie the knot in an an instant and yank it away without you noticing uh but you did catch it before it happened nice try he keeps going am i still drunk oh yeah nice nice try you're you're a lot slower than you think you are you can't even you can't even steal from a are you following him as he walks away and harassing oh, yeah. him? I'm okay, yeah, he walking. starts picking up pace and he's like, I don't know what this little creature is talking about. <laughs> I I'm just, can walk fast too. I'm just, Finley in my head just sounds like Morty right now. Are you scimitaring of speed in order to just <laughs> keep <laughs> up with him? I'm using it like an oar, like I'm in a rowboat. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he, he is de- desperately confused. And he ducks down a side tunnel, and you can see that there are thieves' language, thief can't marks along this tunnel. This guy is trying to evade you by heading to a local thieves' guild. Oh, you th- you know I can read this stuff. He turns around, he's like, shut the fuck up. What oh, are you doing? What are you doing? Don't talk about it. I didn't realize you were one of us. Yeah, I well, thought you let's... were just some drunk rich foreigner trying to take your shit. 
Well, I mean, that's also true, but, well... Well, try not, not to act like a dumbass next time. You look like an easy mark. Oh, uh, well, try, you know, I mean, obviously you need some practice, because look at the state I'm in, and you fail. He's just... You can see that he's getting more and more upset, and he wants to say something, but he turns on a heel and starts walking away. I try to pick his pocket. Oh my god. Go ahead and make a whatever it would be. Slide of hand. Slide of hand. Fuck! Woo. If you oh, weren't so inebriated, it would have worked. Way around. Oh, that would have been so good. You get a finger on his butt and he's like, what are you doing touching me like that? You're so see, weird. See, that's, that's, that's how you look when you try to do it to me. See how silly that looks? He like swats at you. He's like, "Go away, little creature! I'm trying to go back to the guild. Stop I talking give about the, this so loud." I give him the thieves can't uh, speak, which is basically, "I got my eyes on you." All right, he he's just <laughs> doing that fast shuffle walk away from you. <laughs> yeah, he's shuffle just like, "God damn, I fucked up so bad." That's right. Hey, <laughs> did you see me teach him a lesson? You I look around, Agar like, was not anywhere near you. I look around, I'm like, oh shit. You have no idea where you are. Yeah, uh, you fucked off. I retrace my steps. Sure. Make a survival check. Fuck. At I heard the words beer and brewery, and I'm fucking gone. Oh god, this is a wisdom stat? Oh yep. god, okay. Survival at disadvantage. Wow! No. Oh, at disadvantage? <laughs> yeah. Fuck! <clears throat> Ingram, wow, Daka, no. Kelly, you guys reach the first brewery, and that's when your host is like, where's the little one? Where the fuck is the... Where the fuck did he go? Do you guys have a customer service desk around here somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> Will the drunk little, the drunk little halfling please come to customer service? I don't know what that is. A place where people go to you reclaim know, lost items. I, I look at Doc. You know, we should have put a mark on him. That way, we could find the little son of a bitch. You're right. I should have. I'm him. sure. He, I'm sure he'll come back to us. Do you have or, a brother by chance? Maybe one of them, like you know, those those harnesses you can put on children. This would probably fit, right? Wait, we're really good at underground stuff. We could track them, <laughs> right? I imagine I'm much more server than everybody else. You can also use that spell we got. Do we still have that spell? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They saw a wonderful recovery, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. You're mean, casting it to undrunkify yourself? I'm definitely not. <laughs> Neither is Daco. No, I'm not. But <laughs> I, I just I naturally resist with the uh, resistance thing or whatever. But yeah, no. You and me both like rocks. We're kind of like Rorik in that way, uh, but we could we could find the little the little guy. Are the two of you working together to find him? I mean, I want to go find him, but there's so much beer here that's just it's just say, talking to me. It wants to be drunk. I'll stay here with this guy and put my arm around him. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't touch me. Oh, come on. I'm a sacred dragon. It makes Fine. me very uncomfortable. Uh, I'll cast the thing to soberfy myself. All right. All right. You have advantage on the roll if Daka helps you. All right. Um... So Kelly is like, it's no offense to you, right? But in our society, we reserve touching only for those close family members. It's like singing. <laughs> how, how do you do the one night stand thing then? The what? You know, where you have sex with complete strangers? Why would you do that? Well, fun, obviously. Why would you not have sex as the consummation of a long romantic engagement? Just, so, the, the role you're talking about survival, You guys need right? more sunlight, obviously. <laughs> if that's what the way that you're thinking. <clears throat> so you're talking about survival role, AP, yeah? Yes, I am. Okay, just making yep, sure. You get an yeah. advantage. Okay. You need to hit a 16. How's it 25 hey. yeah. <laughs> Several minutes later, Finley, you're like, I don't know where I am. I don't know you're anybody. Like crying in the corner. <laughs> <You're> like, ah, <laughs> speak the language. 
Daka just and like Adrian. Dragging a, pl- dragging a blanket behind you. Just like, <laughs> oh, that's right. Daka, do you have any way to see down here? Because He's got dark vision, doesn't he? Oh, right, right. Yeah. So it's Kelly who's got the problem. Kelly and Finley so, don't have dark vision. So Kelly, uh, I mean, this guy like has a torch. He put his arm around a you. keg instead of a man. <laughs> Uh, he gives you a torch to hold. Uh, no, I gotta take out my sword. I'm just like, I don't need that. Don't they no. have light? They when have you take sword? out the sword, he's oh, like, no, put gone, that man. away. You're drunk. Put that away right now. Hold this torch. Left paw. You hold the torch. It's a claw. Okay. Okay. You hold. Okay. Not the sword. Everything in here is flammable, and that thing is a very long piece of steel. That's some. Fucking overproof beer if it's fucking flammable. I mean, the ke- the kegs would be flammable. It'd be pretty hard to set them on fire. Fine, but, you know. fine, but you owe me one. And I put it back. <laughs> I take the torch. Finley, you're just wandering around drunk. You're so oh my god. Where am I? What's going on? Who can I rob? And you go to hit a mark, and the person that you hit is Agram, who's walking towards you. You want to ah. do you want to steal anything from him while you from Agram? Yeah. No, I'm okay. just happy to see him. So you run into him and you turn into a hug. Okay. I don't know if I have anything he could steal. <laughs> well, he has plenty. You have plenty of things to steal. You have so many magical items now. I mean, I'm wearing them though. I mean, I assume that the Dwarven Thrower is not attached to your physical body. I mean, it returns to me. It can return to you, but that doesn't mean someone can't take it from you. I mean, if you manage to steal a Warhammer, I would... That, that's quite a hefty thing to try and steal from somebody. <laughs> they can have funny. it if they can take it. Yeah. yeah. Probably weighs as much as fucking Finley. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's, 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 he's still drunk, right? Yeah, but he's hugging you right now. Okay. Very funny. All right. Can you? I'm tapping in my head. Can you stop with the? We there's beer that way. Can uh, we go? Yes. Take take me to the beer. Uh, remember give me your, where we're give at. Me, give me your hand. Hey, give hey, me your hand. Hey, hey listen. Hey, shh, shh. hey, listen. Look, you're dr- you dr- drunk. Give me your hand. I'll get us back to the others. It'll be okay. I, I whisper. There's a thieves guild here. That's fine. I don't give a shit. Give me your hand. Let's go. There's uh-huh. beer to be drunk. Just remember where we were. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll make sure to do that. Where just, did we talk our dragon? I just look as I'm looking back ahead. I just roll my eyes like, God damn it. I so I sobered up for this. Several right. minutes later, you all continue your tour through the beer facility, drinking beer. Mm. You have all this alcohol, but you don't party. I don't I, I don't get it. We prefer to party in a more relaxed way than the other races. Our culture holds that one should keep their emotions under control. Oh, you guys are into tantric shit. Oh, I can get down with them. I understand that. Uh, wow. Yeah. Look, the thirst has to go, guys. <laughs> At least for a month. God. <laughs> Please. Remove At the, the end of the me. week, uh, you all find yourselves having completed your pub crawl. Uh, I would say that you have a exceedingly bad hangover. And you just, you wake up one morning and you are in front of a lava flow that has a stone bridge over it that leads to a cave. You have no idea how you got here. But I feel like I can speak freely. That's true. Quick, ask me a question about myself. That wasn't work with you. I already trust you. It's true. Right. Um, is a travel companion here, the guild master? He's not. Okay. Uh, well, I de hang over myself. And uh, straight, uh, do I feel like a curse has been lifted from me, Arthur Perkins? I mean, you feel as if the effects of your madnesses have been mm. lifted from you. It's not a curse, Great. technically. Can I see if I have a hangover to begin with? 
I finally feel no, you're fine. More you're correct okay. with my oath than I have in a very long time. My mind is not clouded with the impure thoughts for the first time in a long time, and I'm good to go. Oh, like so to this is a fantasy game, Dave. I like to think that Agrim wakes up and gets up and he just he burps. He's like, "What the hell?" He burps and he smells it. Oh yeah, that's right. So, whoever's we... beside him, he's just like poke, like, "Hey, hey, you okay? You doing fine?" <laughs> Uh, 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 I hurt. Get up! Come on. Get up! We got shit to do. Oh my face! Can we cast that sober shit on other people, or is it self cast? No, it's a self spell. Okay. Oh, we all have it, right? So I'll just yeah, we all have it. Slap yes. a slap a d. It's whether he remembers if he has it or not. D hangover if I spell or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't remember what it's cast doing. A hey, Sara's wondrous recovery. That one. I'll be fine in a minute. I like to think that what the spell actually is, is it's just like, it's a Bloody Mary and then like some nice fatty breakfast. <laughs> some pickle juice. Some some pickle oh, juice. dude, I love me some pickle juice. Don't even start A raw egg in a stout. Am I the only one? Okay, I was about to say, am I the only one who drinks pickle juice out the jar after you eat all the pickles? But... We have gherkins. Same shit. No, I mean, you I know. I mean, I use the pickle be the go to, waste. to make other things. Like, I... So, <laughs> I think we're running out of time a little bit here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go meet a dragon. Yeah. It's, it's somewhat a sunny way. Let's see how the dragon feels about pickle juice. So, you so we move in, Arthur. You cross the stone bridge. You mm -hmm. enter um, a half sphere cave, almost perfectly carved. It's got uh, a horseshoe shaped moat of lava around it. And one of those glowing crystals, fully intact, not separated in any way, is sitting in the center, hovering over the ground. And there is a ancient red dragon that's wrapped around it. Uh, um, I will in draconic. Because I speak it, I believe. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, you do. You're a dragon. There's a dragon board, draconic. I was about to say. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. And you're not thirsty, so the first thing out of your mouth isn't, hey, want to bang? <laughs> want to make some more dragonborn uh um yeah so draconic celestial and abyssal is what i speak so i'll in draconic i will uh do a bow and i'll introduce myself as uh, uh kelly the last remaining dragonborn on the material plane um you are no the... more dragonborn than i am the horrible bulk of this creature <sighs> shifts down into a kind of androgynous almost elven shape uh it has pointed ears but doesn't appear to have any defining secondary sex characteristics it's just like a very pale skinned tall bald elf very kindle i, I say i say i say kindle but you know i don't know is the this, reference is this flurry i am not flurry the elder who all in here speaks Draconic? I mean, it's speaking common. Okay. Oh. I and Defe Mot, the burnished terror. Oh, it is uh, proof of your wisdom if you can see past this facade. I have seen everything you have ever done. I have observed everything that has ever happened from the moment of my birth. <laughs> Saves us a hell of a lot of introductions. I am filled with wonder and terror at where we will go from here. For I am of the assurance that should you remove this crystal with your passing, my life will take a very different and less noble bent. The natural yeah. impulse of my blood is that to destroy and terrorize Without the valor that I have gained through watching the nobility of all people at all time, I fear that in whatever new timeline you create, I will be a force of eminent destruction, and yet I must consign myself to that wicked fate. Uh, you could be a force of destruction on our side. 
That is a possibility, but one that I deny would be likely to happen. As you probably have already foreseen, part of what we do when we pass through and when we talk to beings such as yourselves that would ally with us is we speak of secrets and we speak of uh, passwords and codes that we can use. I will give you no such code. If you could tell your more, more rash past self one thing, what would it be? My past self has always been this. I will not betray my future self. It is up to them to make their own decisions. And they will not bow to you simply because you come speaking secrets. We're not looking for servitude, if that's what you're implying. The me that you speak with in the future and the me that you speak with now will be entirely two different individuals. I have, since the moment I was created, guarded this crystal. For what purpose? It was simply there. So you sat here for all of eternity, for lack of a better term, yes. guarding something just because it existed. Indeed. Why this? Why not something else? What could I do once I knew that this crystal was the gateway to everything? Well, it makes you think your future self wouldn't find something to fixate on and guard, just as... I am sure that it will. You may have noted, however, among dragonkind, the ones who are not me, that they fixate and guard on things of a material value. I am the most powerful of all dragons. There are none who deny this. We're certainly not denying that. Were I to unleash my power, it would be a terrifying thing. Come, we speak too long on this matter. You simply know that it will happen. Everything will change. For you more than others. True. Well, we'll be more aware of it than they will be. That is not of what I speak. Fair enough. I have other selves to commune with, though. More than May you we. know. May we. If there is nothing else, take of the crystal, then. One final question before we leave. Uh, the elf known as Starwood Black, is that his name? Starwood Black is no elf. Starwood. He is more than a tiefling and less than a god. Oh, what about Monochrome? Arnax the Monochrome. He seemed involved in our creation, or at least someone who found out. I find that highly unlikely. Someone who found out about who was before. <clears throat> Tarnax the Monochrome lived long ago. He is a planeswalker. This is not his native plane. A human from another realm. He inspired the elven people to create humans. So when this guy told us to partake of the thing, is he just going to let us go up and do it? He doesn't seem to be blocking you in it well. I mean, he's an ancient red dragon. If he wants to stop you from touching well, yeah, it, yeah, that's will. what I'm saying. But he's also the way it sounds is he knows it's inevitable and is just going to let it happen. Yes, it's the way I I, I have one final request. Uh, you say that you will be different, and most likely will be once the crystal is removed. Is there anything that I can do to? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Hang on. Um, 
capture the you that you are now uh, to preserve it? No. What you asked for, you are not capable of doing. I'll look to like Doc and Finlay. Well, shall we? I think it's time. I'll turn um, back to the dragon and be like, I'm sorry for your loss and future self. My congratulations to you. Don't congratulate us yet. Not, I will, not I will you. join them, Martha, but you. only to converse with the other Okay. Uh, Ellie, so. so, like, do we all need to touch at the same time? We're, like, holding hands and touching it? I mean, the three of you like can touch Captain it. Like a planet situation? Yeah, or? the three of you <laughs> yeah. touch it together. Kelly reaches <laughs> out to touch it, but doesn't quite make it before stretching in there. Yoop. Mm -hmm. uh, all of you wind up in front of the Guardian of Time, who immediately introduces himself. Kelly, you recognize this guy. The rest of you have no idea who he is. It's a pleasure to see you again. I am Xenos, Guardian of Time. <laughs> Sorry, every time you say Xenos, I just think Purge. <laughs> we have learned quite a bit since our last confrontation. Have you? Yes, you are I dear, would. So you have. I believe little. it would be wise for my companions to converse with themselves and merge the timelines. Did you tell us anything about this guy? I did. Okay. I, I told you that. all that there was a guardian, and he allowed me to converse with myself. I do him. not allow you to do anything. It is your privilege. Well, then we need to speak to the most capable version of ourselves to get something done. Does such a thing exist? Who knows? Have we tried this before? You have come here innumerable times. You come to this place when you die. You just don't remember it on your way out. But we always come back the same. You will leave this place with memories this time. Yeah. So make sure you ask the right questions of yourselves. One day, I will destroy all of you. And it will be the most glorious day of my life. But it's not this day. It would not seem so. Well then. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't have any more banter with Xenos the Guardian of Time, you reform yourselves in whatever shape you wish. I assume all of you have uh, new character ideas ready to go. So it's pretty, where are, you, where are you landing? Where are you going? I mean, I feel like I'm going Druid. Well, I mean, you don't, yeah. well you'll have two weeks to figure it out, right? Three yeah. weeks, really. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty solid on what I'm going to choose though. So if I can like talk to my character, so Daka, cool. I want to I want the last scene to be yours. Okay. Tonight, uh, whatever your new class is, all of the implements of that are hanging around the cave. Uh, your two attunable items and a small tiefling baby are in the cave with a set of diapers next to it when you wake oh. up. Oh shit, son! Oh shit! Baby born! You guys get 500 XP for tonight. Is that enough? No, no, no not even close. <laughs> we're we're at we're at we're at twelve seven forty nine and fourteen thousand. If my numbers be correct. Yep. They what are, are you gonna call this kid, Daka? That's a good thing. He does. And it's a tunable item, so it means this, this kid is now stuck with us. I and ain't a tunable item? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, hey, you said it's a tunable. It's a, it counts as a tunable item, so yeah. It, it's an attunable about, thing. It's an okay. it's a person. Can I offer I an mean, yeah, It's a baby. Jesus. So we, got, we got two point. weeks. You guys can help me. What about, what about 
Oh my god, you guys are so strange. What if we pick baby names, guys? Like, what is, should we throw oh, Doc no. a baby shower in character? The first Bub, time you try an ask, you ask X, uh, for babysitter. Bubba cliff. and Gygax. You're gonna Bygax? name your baby after two Bygax. pets that you've owned. <laughs> that mm. would be like naming my child Fido Sugar. Mm. Yeah. That's a good name. Well, that's yeah, a great original. name. <laughs> Fido Sugar it is. Ducker, you have a new baby. Yeah. Fido Sugar sounds like a male stripper name in Florida. Hey man, don't 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 you don't you take away the cool from us, okay? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? I wow. refuse to be part of this process. God, I hope I you know what this this entire next survival line is just going to be shoot 'em up. Or a man and a baby. We're fighting. We're fighting off things, holding a baby in the offhand. You know, like ah. it's gonna be like the. Uh, it's gonna be like that scene in uh, what was it? The last Fast and Furious movie on the plane. No, there's an entire movie where a guy like fights people with guns while protecting a baby. It's called Shoot 'Em Up. Mm. Well, I've, se- I've, se- I've seen it. It's just been a while. But, but yeah, crazy. I know it's there's awesome. a there's a like a fifteen ten fifteen minutes segment in like the latest Fast and Furious movie where um. Oh God! What's his name? Jason Statham is uh, rescuing the baby. Yeah. Rescuing the baby on the plane. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> shoots a guy in the face and then tries to like cheer the baby up. Shoots another guy. It's funny. Well, I'm pretty solid on what my next character is going to be. It's going to be the warlock, you. Yeah. It's going to be warlock, but the race is also non-standard. I see. <sighs> what well, is it? What is it? Don't tell us. Make us press. No, tell us. Do you, do you guys want to know? And no, yeah, I, 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 I need to know. I need to know. Well, they don't. I've already said what mine is, so that's whatever. Yeah. Hey, I'll, hey. I'll... When I did this last time, I dropped what I was gonna be. You know. Well, I've already said I'm seeing a dwarf, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's not of this plane. Ooh. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. It's asthma, probably. Right? <laughs> Uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be an elemental. Let's, let's start with let's start with drummer boy. Hi, it, I'm it, drummer boy. I make music and put it on the internet. Uh, you can find it at drummer boy on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon Music, uh, YouTube now I think too. So if you do the YouTube playlist, if you type in drummer boy, I've got like a topic uh, playlist. YouTube music, yeah. Uh, it's not YouTube music. It's like a, they auto-generate topics. So if you type in German Boy, I have my own auto auto-generated topic yeah, with I'm all my music sure in there. Yeah, YouTube music, like it, yeah. like one name or yeah. something. So if you listen to music on YouTube, that's a way you can do that if you want. Um, latest track on Spotify was "Bad Shapes" for Roleplay. Roleplay.bandcamp.com. It's like a synthy symphonic thing. If you are into that, check it out. All those tunes that I do for roleplay are a dollar on the roleplay band camp. Um, pretty soon, they might be up on streaming services as well. So if you don't want to pay for them, they might be up on Spotify and other streaming platforms later. Um, yeah, I play Dishonored on the weekends. If you want to, if you want to check that out, I'm doing a full-on lore playthrough this time, so I'm reading everything pretty much. Wow, that I'd done that. That is a lot of shit. It's a lot, yeah. but yeah. it's pretty rewarding. Like I've already found out a lot about Slackjaw that I didn't know before because he has like a full on four or five page origin story in there, and he's brutal. And I'm hey, I'm trying to what, do what past. Are you playing, sir? Uh, Dishonored. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What's her name? Granny, whatever. Granny Rags. Yeah, there's so much shit about her in the game. There's so much about her. And then I'm trying to do... Um, I played it through once to completion, and then once again about halfway through. Uh, so I'm trying to take routes that I didn't take last time and played it a little bit differently. So I, the, the most recent one, like the Pendletons, you, you have to kill or non-lethally remove um, the Pendleton brothers. And the way I did it this time was the way I didn't do it before. I let Slackjaw take care of them. Well, I took out an artist and he sent them to their own diamond mines with their heads shaved and tongues cut out so they couldn't do and can't tell anyone who they were. 
Okay. Nice. So that's neat. That's what that video game was like. So if you like that, come watch on uh, on the weekends. <laughs> that's about it for me. Spoonic. Check out Maniac on Netflix. It's good. Nick, I want to I want to get in the headspace, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like out of all the characters here, Finley is the most likely to become the uncle of this baby. I mean, yep. It depends on how shitty the kid is. It's, it's, <laughs> if, the kid, if the kid's good, it's going to be like God, Godfather. Oh, you could be the Godfather. Oh, God. I mean, I I might try to corrupt them, or her, or you know, they're might, already might might. I don't know if you could. See, the good thing about being an uncle is that you can hang out with a kid, and then when it starts to get shitty, you can just give it back to the all the fun, none of the responsibility. I That's know. Right. I have two. I have two nephews in town, yes. and I just kind of like. Yeah, I'm gonna buy him a, a drum set for his birthday. <laughs> Perfect. I did that to my brother. It was good. <laughs> Yes. Uh, hello, toy salesman. I will take the noisiest toy you have, please. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Let's see your but outro, Spooty. More, more importantly, Spooty, what race are you going to play next? I don't know. That's a be non-halfling Finley? I literally can't even imagine it. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna I mean, see. you got the you got the, all the extra shit in the the other one, so maybe you could be a bird. Kanku, Kanku Finley. No, Eric Coker. I think the one. Eric yeah. Coker. Chocobo. I would love to see. I would love to see a version of Finley that could only respond via mimicry. <laughs> what are the, what are the other races? There's Goliath. There's the. There's a bunch. Is there Minotaurs? The uh, yeah, but they're. I mean, they're. You'd have to. They're technically a monstrous race, I guess. You'd have to. You know, anywhere you go, you would be stabbed to death. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Let's talk about you, Spoonik, you know? Uh, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at, uh, what's my name? Spoonik at Spoonik underscore, underscore 71. 71. Uh, on Twitch, I am Spooty McTooty because fuck Cambodia. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, and tomorrow evening... Uh, my fiance and I find out if we have won a free wedding from the University of South Carolina. Oh, oh shit. shit. Damn, dude. That's good. Good luck. She uh, submitted a, uh, an essay, a uh, 500-word essay. There's like a wedding planning class, and it's their class project. Uh, so we got picked as finalists, and we're meeting the class tomorrow. Ooh. So be nice. Interesting. Good luck. That'll we'll be see sick. what happens. I'll let you know. That's me. You could be a warforged. I mean, that's an Eberron thing, right? I mean, I don't know if that's, I don't know if the Eberron stuff is in play. That's not, that's not yeah. warforged. He could, be, he could be Groot. Last time I had someone play a warforged, they ended up becoming a, like a prince of hell and hunted other warforges in order to <laughs> send them to hell to meet their mom. Hmm, that's wholesome. <laughs> Sarah Connor. <laughs> Emily, let's see your outro. Hey, what up, everybody? It's your boy Spicy Mayonnaise back with another shout out at the end of a fantastic episode. Not a lot of combat, but I feel like we're about to step into a realm of combat after eating this crystal. So I think we're gonna have our film. This this was like you know the beach the beach arc basically for us. Oh, I had a theory that I never got to... Say. Just in time for season two. My yeah. theory about why this cycle was so chill, like we learned that all the extra planar beings aren't really comfortable coming here anymore, and I think they were fucking with the first one, and now that they're not in the picture, it's like, everything's nice. So I the next one's going to be interesting. I was going to say, I thought you were going to say it's because uh, Finley was frozen in stone. Yeah. But now we're going to have dragons running amok. So, you know, that's, that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check out my shit, youtube.com slash Henley, that's where all the archives are. Um, I do streaming occasionally whenever I get home and I'm not dog ass and tired from, because right now I'm running three companies. So it is a nightmare. 
Well, not really. It's 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 it keeps me really really busy. Like if anyone's ever been a manager before, like a proper manager, you know exactly the sort of hell that I'm going through right now. Um, but we have a game in uh, Kickstarter right now, Out as Blood with an A, not an E. Sorry for my Australian. Um, which Do you have is... an American accent that you could you could try it? Over, over the past uh, a couple of hours, we've managed to jump up a couple hundred bucks on the Kickstarter, so that's good. Um, we're looking to get to 17,000 for the fourth uh, stretch goal, and we have nine hours to go, so, you know, extra 800 bucks within nine hours. America will wake up and, uh, or, you know, whatever. You Maybe will not. probably wake up. We'll see. We'll see. We're projecting like seven and a half, but we'll see how we go. Anywho, um, thank you very much for watching. Remember to use Twitch Prime on um, AP's channel because he deserves it. He's a good man who makes some good shit. Twitch Prime. I'm ready, I'm ready to get back into combat though, for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, and, uh, yeah, so I'll be on holiday. And if you're wondering where I'm going to holiday, Athens in Greece. That's where I'm going. If you got any sweet restaurant recommendations, send them to Henley. Yeah, most likely. I'm a big seafoodie, so, you know, let's... Uh, well, maybe going to the Mediterranean. Really, they have really... There's some really good Greek restaurants there. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. <laughs> in Greek, yeah. In, in Greece, Greece yeah. yeah. You've got to try the 7-Eleven in Athens. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know what? Sweaty, you know what? You say that shit, but I want to yeah. tell you something, motherfucker. Anthony Bourdain has eaten basically everything on this fucking planet and been everywhere. And you know what he said his favorite food was? An egg sandwich from Lawson's, which is a convenience store in Japan. Because they do it. They do it right. Japan. Well, like, so I don't know really, about Athens and 7-Elevens, but don't dis- I was going to say a lot he of- He also really liked the uh, Waffle House when he was in South Carolina. Yeah, a lot of places, I mean, they have their own localizations of stuff just either due to, I mean, obviously local taste and then logistical reasons too. Not so. every gas station is a Sputnik salad. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sputnik salad. <laughs> that is true, I mean, uh, has, has he gone to Australia and eaten a servo pie? I don't think so. Those things are amazing. This salad is so bad, I wouldn't feed it to Sputnik. <laughs> Why are you giving yeah, only me. bad food to Sputnik? That's my question. I'm just saying, this is a fucking, what's his face? Whatever, anyway. Atomic. Uh, what do you got? Um, Atomic Spoon, Twitch and Twitter, stream work of stuff Tuesdays, Thursdays. Um, here Wednesdays, uh, here Saturdays, except for this week, because uh, James is in San Francisco, of all the places, good work state in the union. Um, Yes, that's pretty much to do. Stream other stuff whenever. Um, now this hurricane business is done. Hopefully I get to go to the range because guns, whiskey, and heavy metal are my three favorite things. So, you know, hopefully I the hope weather will you're not clear. partaking of all three at the same time. Negative. I am a responsible adult. Plus this... I have a CCW, so I would lose it if Making I got sure. caught with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much me. So I'll be streaming my own night. We're doing the Mythic Eternal Palace. we are hit the first wall and we suck. We're terrible at the game. Like mostly I'm terrible at the game, so we back and play the control. So that'll take a couple days to get done. But yeah, it's good stuff. So I'm playing classic here and there. So yeah, that's pretty much me. How you doing, Arthur? Well, you know, there's things happening and that's it. That's all I have. When uh so what's the day after Saturday? Sunday? Sunday Game of Thrones. Probably, yeah. I hope. I'll look really do, do, dumb do, do, being do, like, hey guys, get ready for the do, show do, launch. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Not doing, you're not doing a Kazoo version of the intro, you're doing it wrong. No, it's not naked penis, it's flaccid penis. That's right. Yeah, they didn't want to. We're done. Yeah. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Sorry we're ending a little early, but you know what? I can't wait to see the new D&D Beyond character sheets these guys have in three yeah, months. No, it's a good I haven't even made mine for new kids. I know. That's why you're going to for three mine months from now. Mine might be done. Uh, yeah. We might have a new overlay that will incorporate Ooh. the D&D Ooh. Beyond overlay into it to some extent. Cool. Could happen. I, was, <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> oh, well, I just thought about the artist. Just as we get shirts of our old characters, we're making new characters. I know. I know. I'm not changing all that much. Well, if you'd like to have a keepsake of the old characters, 
There's a Teespring merch in the chat. I mean, I, I bought I bought the shirt as in the net listing of things. We had them for the a the... whole year and thirty episodes, guys. Like thirty five. I love. I really like the idea that the assembly of Agrim is literally just like old dwarves with different beard styles. You laugh, but my new one is just a. He's got he's white hair instead of uh, like a brownish he's got in it. But twin it's, it's tails more... beards. No, it's, and it's they're a thick, in the shape thicker, of drills as well. It's it's a thicker beard There's and he's got a, more hair. Like a little but... barrel. Oh, stuff. and it's it's pink it's as well. It's see, Dave, anime Agrim. So you laugh, Dave, but in Warhammer Online, there was actually a, one of the um, collector's edition rewards was a beard that had uh, a whiskey barrel or an ale barrel barrel in the beard. That was a thing. Got a You're long right. enough beard to tie a tie a warhammer to the end so you can flick it at people. And ah. then you're still, still dual wielding while you do it. Yep. Anyway. Well, that's it. Bye. Have a good night. Appreciate Later, guys.